Welcome back to another Supercoach video with me, JD. You're joining me for the team update post the round zero games. Eight teams we got to see, which gives us so much information, better than anything else we get in the preseason, and it should influence our decisions. It'd, I think it'd be silly not to, but we've got to try and pick through what's real and what's not and update our teams based on what we have seen. Now, apologies in advance, I am still recovering from a cold. I will be coughing non-stop throughout this video. Um, I'll be trying to pause the best I can, like, the audio through it. There's no editing. There will never be edited, but we'll try and pause best I can so you don't have to listen to it. You just get awkward silences as I quietly die over here. Now, before we jump into it, I was going to actually do a fantasy video instead, but we've had a little bit of controversy on how pricing works in that format, and it does radically change the sides. We haven't heard anything about it for Supercoach, but I'm assuming that it works the same as normal for these round zero players, which is that the round zero game counts for one price rise, and then it rolls off their average after that. Um, so it does a little bit, but the influence isn't huge beyond just getting a, a little injection of cash into their... Um, uh, price. Now, you're probably wondering, what the hell's going on on screen? And uh, in the last video, a few people peeked up that I had a dark mode on, and it actually can do a little bit more than this. This is one of the features where you can kind of switch on, like seeing um, faces, and then uh, during the season, I think these will update here with like how tough the schedule is for the position that they're in, which is all pretty cool. And then, of course, um, uh, actually just go back to just like a normal vision, but with dark mode. And I think you can even pick what accent colors you use. So some pretty cool features on this, uh, as you can imagine, probably not my team. Uh, it's called, I think, SC Mod. I am going to try and put a link in the description below um, so you can go and check it out and play around with it. It is still experimental. It is not perfect. I'm sure there's some bugs and whatnot that you'll find. But if you would like a dark mode, this is the best solution I've got so far. And um, yeah, there should be some cool extra features coming with it. All right. So let's, with that all said and done, let's get into actually building out a team here. And we're going to do the thing that I've recommended that you, you should do once we get to this stage in the team, which is we just hit the clear button. And as you can see, that was one of the little bugs there. The text in my screen is not working as a result of this anymore. So we've cleared our team and we are ready to build for round one. What do we start with? We start with rookies. And in particular, what I like starting with is the rookies that I am confident having on field and playing them on field. And then I kind of build out from there. Then I, you know, fill out the bench rookies and then I'll start to fill out um, the best value picks that I find on, on field. And then uh, we kind of uh, adjust at the edges based on that. So, and this is like really actually like quite different to how we build teams um, initially in the preseason because rookies are all just placeholders. So we just start with like the value guys and the premiums we like, and then we go from there. But um, yeah, anyway, rookies that we like um, uh, in this format. So on field, uh, I think McKercher, Sanders, we're happy with these ones. Uh, I think Husweight is definitely still an option. Uh, we've got Robert who was uh, taking kick-ins on the weekend with Lloyd pushed up onto wings. So that's a great sign. Um, Husweight, McKercher, and Sanders, we've got no new information about, but they all looked good. Um, so yeah, we're pretty comfortable with these. Uh, no starting ruck rookies. And in the forward line, I think we're still okay with Harley Reid after what we saw him do in the match sim. Uh, played him more on ball rather than that weird defensive role. I'm sure he still do a bit of both, but liked what I saw out of that. Uh, we've got Alex Sexton, who um, didn't have as good a score on the weekend, but still great for his price. Um, yeah, second or third half back in that. I think he took maybe one kick in, but was behind Buderick and Power this time. But we're very confident having him on field. And I think these are about all the rookies that I want to have on field. There's pretty much no others that I like. am actively looking to seek out. Um which is, I think, a little bit of tough because I'm not, I'm not going to run for all four of these um, mid-rookies. I'll put one of them on the bench, which means I need to fill out two other bench rookies here. I need two, you know, I still need to fill out all these bench spots. So let's let's just do that. Um, in defense, who do we like? We like Gibkiss. We like, actually, I don't know, maybe I am playing a rookie in defense. We like Howes and we like Reed. These are probably the three um, that I like most. Uh, we'll talk about Caulfield in, in, in a second as well. So Gibkiss scored, what, roughly 80 uh, from the game on the weekend. Lots of spoil points. He's going to be, you know, taking number one defender and seeing a lot of ball based on what we saw from Richmond. 
He's going to get some nice bike games and make some good points. Uh, Howes, also we saw a good game from him on the weekend with the Bowes injury, Bowie injury. I, I think that only helps him. I, the interesting thing here is like potentially Hoare comes in as a replacement. Marty Hoare comes in as a replacement for uh, Bowie, which a bit of a spanner in the works because he can score well. You know, Do you actually want to run extra to defender if Hoare's named? Ooh, tricky. Uh, and then Reed, yeah, I mean, no new information on Reed, but liked what I saw out of him as well. So those are the three defender rookies. The one that has been left off now is Caulfield. And the reason why is because I think I only want to run three plus Zach Williams and Caulfield makes for too many. Of the rookies that we're discussing, Gibkiss, Howes, Reed, Caulfield, I think if Caulfield had the right role, he's got the highest scoring potential of any of these. But I do think his job security is currently the weakest and they were playing him as, as more of a small defender than a halfback rebounding type. So um, I think I'm going to pass on him for now and correct him later if required. All right, other rookies that we're going to fill out here in the midfield, uh, and this is a little bit weird now, but uh, I, I think we're going to go Wilson um, and Jai Clark. They're really the other two. I think in other years, reasonably, we could be fielding both of those, but we're not. Uh, in the rucks, we're going to have to go with Naismith. His scoring potential is definitely there. Whether or not he's still in the team round one, I'm not sure. Like, yeah, Ryan could come out over him, but if they get both and then Curvis and Lynch back... Uh, it's going to be tough. Hopefully he gets a second game and then, you know, we, we just need to kind of get like four or five games throughout the year and he makes enough cash to be worthwhile. Uh, but yeah, like reasonably I could see people starting uh, a loophole as well. And then only other rookies I like here are Lazaro and we're going to go with Cadman. Um, so those are the rookies that I think I am comfortable starting across all the lines. Uh, the reason for Lazaro, well, it hasn't really changed since last time. It looks like he's going to be getting some CBAs on the ball, uh, mature age. And then Cadman, yeah, in his second year, definitely put on size, looks better. Oh, off the top of my head, I want to say he scored like a 50, 55, something like that against the Pies, but a really soft fixture with West Coast and North in the first two games. So looking for him to have a big spike game quite early. And if he doesn't in those next two fixtures, we'll trade him. Um, him having one small price rise will correct him to someone that hasn't had a price rise yet through the first two games. So, um, yeah, I like like that option a lot. I'll just quickly look through other highly owned uh, rookies here and maybe talk about why I'm not picking them. Uh, what do we need? 210k, something like that. Uh, so Sean Manor, I think if he ends up with good, decent job security, he is one that's still towards the top of my list for sure. Uh, Windsor played all right, but I didn't see enough to think he's going to make great returns on the 180k. Uh, Dersma, yeah, I mean, he's playing that like smallish half forward role in a side that I predict to not do particularly well this year. So uh, I'm once again, unlikely to make money on this um, starting price. Think like Rochelle from uh, a couple of years ago. Finn McRae doesn't have job security. Nick Watson, it's like the same as Dersma, but um, maybe even worse. Like Dersma is probably a better player. Uh, Darcy, I think if he was to come in as the ruck in, over lob, that'd be interesting, but his job security is not great. He has to perform. And then really no one else is above 10%. So that's where we're at with those ones. Um, yeah, Hall could potentially come in. I think there's a chance that like Loman uh, ends up with a better role now that uh, Kitty Coleman's injured. But given that he had uh, what like a thirty or something coming off a sub game put into his price, I'm like happy to wait on him, especially with the early buy. Uh, Dempsey for the Cats is interesting. He may end up getting a role. Mead could be potentially interesting. There's a few that could be. Uh, Thomas didn't play well enough. Uh, so yeah, yep. Yeah, these are the rookies I'm comfortable with. So it looks really weird because I wish I could hit save team and then they would just go to the bench or like move them down to the end, but not how it works. So this is going to look weird as we fill it out. Uh, I probably shouldn't have done it like this. All right. So defenders, who do we like? Uh, Nick Dacos. Uh, he's been in my side. Oh, let's fix this up. Um, like all preseason. It's not changing. We're not changing. All right. We like the Dacos. Uh, I think he's going to be D1. I think there's a chance he's M1. He scored a 130 with lower time on ground than what you would expect in an absolute thrashing. So uh, that's probably good signs. He yeah, had cramps for the last like five to 10 minutes of that game. He could have gone higher, junked it up a little bit more. We like Dacos. We like Dacos. There's no one else to take points off him in that side. Um, yeah, I don't know what else there's to say. In in, in a year where I, I tweeted this today, like there's 14 defenders that I think I could see being top of line. 
um, which is true. It's very wide open, but I am very confident at the same time that Dekos will be number one. And I want to start that. Uh, all right. Well, some of the other guys I want to write up the top here. So let's put in Sheasel. Let's put in Williams. Let's put in Hayden Young. Where does that get us to? Um, if I hit save team, that should reorder them now. Nope, it doesn't. Leaves <laughs> Young on the bench. Poor guy. Um, oh, yeah. What? A price ordering, please. Uh, actually, I don't know who the last defender is as well anyway. So let's let's put in Yo. Not a popular one at all. What's his? Less than 10%. Not that ownership matters. We don't care about ownership. So, uh, just talking through the others. Sheasel. Uh, we saw what we needed to see from him out of the two matching games. They're still going to play him at halfback, even with uh, Fisher and McKercher down there as well. And he's still going to score well enough. And they've got this whole North Ball thing going on. And they're going to concede lots. So... Uh, yeah, lots of good signs for Sheasel there. Uh, should should be able to push 105. He did, what, 100 last year. Uh, and they've lost Zeeble. He's now the 1A in that defense. So, yeah, good signs for him. Young, uh, push into the midfield. We saw that. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit trickier now with uh, Fife also coming in. But it's a tight four mid-rotation, I would imagine. He should get 50 60%, something like that. And, yeah, we saw the scoring power out of him. So, what, he's priced at. What did he do last year? 90? 95, maybe? Where was your average last year? 94. Uh, and I think you can put 10 points for that. So good value for there. Good buy as well. And then Elliot Yo, um, Look, he's probably the least likely of any of the defenders to actually end up being premium. He could. He's had the scoring in the past to do it. But uh, look, unlikely to get there. But he is well underpriced. Priced at something like 80. Uh, should be able to get up to 95, 100 range and return some good value. Obviously, doesn't have the buy or anything like that as well. So happy to start him and then jump on someone else that maybe falls uh, in price like a Stewart if that happens. Um, Cicely Will, Sinclair Will, but I don't know if I necessarily want them. Uh, or use him to jump on someone like a Whitfield after his buy. Uh, short after his buy something like that you know update upgrade him around that point if i need to so yeah very very happy with this um i think the benefit of going yo over someone like stewart is he's nearly 200k cheaper so frees me up to do some fun stuff in other lines but here we go that's that's defense for now i'm probably not starting gibkiss i think based on round one matchup reed's got hawks so he's probably starting reed um That'll change between now and uh, round one with teams being named and all that type of stuff. But yeah, something like this. All right, mids, we've got five here to fill out. Firstly, let's get in the value ones that, that I like. So we're going to go Nick Barton and go Oliver Wines. These are the, probably the two that I, I mean, Martin, I've been set on since January and I've seen no reason to change off that. And Wines, I think I like more than Crouch now. Just, you know, Wines was lead CBA mid. Um, it makes sense as to why he would have the bounce back if he's had two kind of injury affected years, gets back in there, performs well, like we've seen ports run is pretty soft to start the year, especially for mids. Uh, and especially knowing that, um, Richmond now is going to be a soft matchup. I mean, West coast, Richmond first two, uh, and then Melbourne have got to work, work out what's going on there as well. So, uh, not a bad start for wines, which for someone that probably isn't a keeper, but it's going to make nice money for us. Love that for him. Uh, then I think I need to figure out if I'm going a third budget option. I don't think I will. So I think we're going to go Bont and Pelly, which is funny because I've been like anti-Bont all preseason. Uh, so let's go Bont, Butters, and Davies, Uniaki. Building the team backwards is a mistake, and I promise I will never do this again. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh. Uh... Actually, I think we might start Husswet over McKercher, something like that. All right. So, um, yeah, uh, we've got Bont here. We're going to talk about another option that I saw uh, that isn't this, but I've just ended up with extra money because of the value options I'm going. Bont doesn't have the buy. He's durable. He should be top eight. I'm going to lose money on this probably in this realm of like 70K, I think. Uh, but I've just got to kind of back that the other value that I've got will make up for it. I think other reasonable considerations here are Tom Green, uh, who is definitely underpriced. And if there were no buys, would be in my side. Absolutely. I think he's going to go to the next level. 
what 111 last year, I would have him going 115 plus this year, especially uh, with GWS improving as well. Uh, Goulden, I know he had the bad game round one, but I think he's probably improving on his average as well. There's a few other uh, midfield options this year that you could look at. Uh, Steele, Tukmila, but yeah. Um, I don't think I need to save the money. I will show you one option where if I do, like what it can do to the side for those that are interested in seeing alternatives, but I think I'm likely to start Bond at the moment. All right, moving on into the rucks. So uh, we are still going Gorn and Grundy. I actually don't see a reason to change off this. Um, Grundy, I was wavering a little bit for. And look, if you really wanted to save some money, I could see someone maybe jumping off Gorn and going down to Cherry if that was something that you were really keen on. But uh, or like you're super uncertain about Gorn, but I still think there's enough value in his price. And what we saw in round one will be... Um, the exception, not the norm for him. It does put him in a little bit of a tricky place because what he's priced at 105, he put in a much poorer score than that for round one. I couldn't tell you what it was off the top of my head, like 80, 70. So the break even is going to be working against him early and we do have him for value, but I think he'll be able to fix that up and turn it around. So I'm not too worried about this yet, but we'll wait and see. Uh, and then in the forwards, we have got... And look, this is really the trickiest line at the moment to figure out because we had Jackson put his hand up with the Shrek news. Um, I think the tricky part of there is like, how long is Darcy going to be out for? They've said unofficially like what, three to six weeks or something like that. Um, and or I even heard maybe even two to four. Now, if you told me he was going to be out six weeks, I'd probably be interested in taking on Jackson because I could start him, have a ruck loophole, use him to cover off both Gorn and Grundy, uh, and then, you know, by that time, Darcy comes back, Jackson's made a bit of money, I can trade off Jackson to someone coming out of their buy like a Flanders, happy days. But, uh, yeah, it sounds like Darcy may come back early in that, we're going to wait and see what the injury reports are this week, because if he is going to be more like six weeks, or eight weeks, or something like that, rather than three, then I'm probably very keen on Jackson, but as of right now, I think I'm going to avoid... Uh, Flanders put in a pretty good showing on the weekend and he had 50 percent ish CBAs, 55, 60, something like that in that range, which is what we want to see out of him. But it's also a very hard game to take anything out of just because of how poor Richmond were for the most part. Uh, so do I think Flanders is a top six forward for the year? Yes. Do I think he's underpriced? Yes. Do I think he's underpriced enough that it's worth taking him on with the early buy, especially in a forward line that also has Sexton and Cadman. And that's where I'm unsure at the moment. Um, and then, yeah, the last one is George boy, uh, Isaac Heaney. Uh, so the midfield time was true for once. Uh, he had, yeah, once again, in like the fifties, sixties, actually might even be more than that. He might've been close to leading CBAs for them. And he looked damn good. The best he's looked as a mid. This is what I said in my round zero review videos. Uh, tackling, getting into right places, actually winning the ball at the bottom of contests, like genuinely their best mid on the night, uh, which is the first time I think I can say that in Heaney's career from me watching him as a mid. The concerning part is that Horse is a super coach terrorist, for sure. He's He's got that status. And it was even talking about in that game, moving him forward for periods of time rather than letting him stay in the midfield just because of how poor the forwards were doing. And that's something they still need to work out. Uh, Heaney is also a bit of a rental in and, and has a buy, uh, but he's also a bit of a rental in the sense that once Parker, Mills, um, Adams return, does he hold that spot or do they do something else with it? Um, uh, so yeah, like a bit of a rental there, but obviously big, big um, first round score kind of put into his price rise. He's shown premium scoring before. Uh, and look, even if he does end up getting pushed forward, if he's fit and firing at his best, he probably stand, can still do low 90s, which would make him keeperish. So he needs the other option here and maybe the one that I start with, which is a little bit weird. It feels wrong because Flanders is, what, 11k more, and I know he's going to be a keeper, or at least I'm more sure he's going to be a keeper than Heaney. But I'm somewhat drawn to starting Heaney over him. Maybe it's because of the Sexton Cadman factor. Now, the other issue here is I'm going to put in more, more mid prices. So I'm going to put in Jordan. Oh, I'm going to put in Fisher. I've missed Fisher. And I'm going to put in Fife. 
and that'll be the team done. We've actually knocked through it like in sub 20 minutes, which has got to be the fastest so far. Um, so uh, I, if you feel like I haven't explained some of these picks enough, it's probably because we've gone through it in previous videos uh, and sorry that you haven't been jumping on those or in the round zero review, I covered off a lot of these plays that we've got kind of new information on. Um, oh, the other thing I probably should do is go through some of the popular players that I have knocked out of this, including like maybe talking about like a Lions or something like that. But um, I think these are probably more plays that we'll go through on the podcast, um, the FTTV pod, which we'll do this week, no doubt, and go into in depth in some more of these guys. All right. So to finish out the side here, um, yeah, I think the other thing that's hard about Heaney is um, I'm going to put in Jordan. I've now got Grundy as well and Roberts and Dacos. So that buy, which is what the round five or six buy, I've got five off. Um, I guess the good things here is that they're mostly split across separate lines apart from Heaney and Jordan, um, which is a little bit of a problem, but I can imagine by the time we get to that buy, I'm probably off trading off one of these guys in either Heaney or Jordan. And once again, it could be to a Flanders, that type of player. And I think that's why I lean towards starting Heaney um, over Flanders at the moment, just because I've already got Sexton and Cabman for that first buy that Flanders has and some of these other guys I can trade into Flanders before their buy and after his so I'm leaning towards that at the moment uh yeah Fisher we saw in the match him that he can well outperform his price uh with that role that he's got so just back that in Jordan I saw enough to be pretty comfortable with him at 280k I think he's best 18 uh job security should be locked and loaded horse stuffed around with him in that first quarter which should not repeat if he watched the rest of the game and then Fife I'm expecting like mid eighties from him, mid eighties, which at his price, absolute huge win. Uh, it's just about the body and how well that holds up. And now that Billings is an option and I've never really liked harms that much. I think Fife will be the one for me. The one other option I had with this team is um, instead of Bont, I could go a little bit more mid pricey in Matt Crouch. And then in this forward line here, you actually have some options in terms of I could put in a Flanders. Uh, and run both of them. So if you really wanted to run a heavier forward line, I think you could do something like that. But I will not be doing that. We'll be leaving the team like this. Let's have a look. Can even get some pictures going for them. Oh, the squad, the boys, they're looking good. Yeah, see Cadman here, purple, purple, gray. This is this is why we're thinking about starting him as an option. Um, some of these other <laughs> mids here got very nice fixtures to begin with. Uh, although I'm not sure Gold Coast will be purple anymore based on what we saw on the weekend, especially with Rao going crazy on the clearances. And I wouldn't be picking my team just based on fixture, but hey, nice to know. So once again, you can find that mod, that dark mod in my description below. The team is here and then we will quickly just go through other pie owned players that I have not talked about because I'm sure I'll get questions if I don't. But as I said, we're going to go through some of these and more in the Fantasy Tech TV pod, no doubt. All right, just quickly running down. Uh, so I think of oh, what that's the top 16. I've got all of them. Yay, such a diverse, interesting game. Uh, Sharp. Copped a knock to his leg in a practice game for Freo on the weekend. So I've always had a little bit of concern about his job security, but that knock is enough for me to be off him. Goulden, I was already against, but hey, he did himself no favors on the weekend. Manor, yeah, interesting if the job comes up. Windsor, already spoken about. Curtin, uh, yeah, like uh, the one, the other options we've got are so much better. We don't need Curtin. Uh, already spoke about all these guys. Tom Green spoke about. Stewart spoke about. Billings, Saab, Coleman, Injured, Phillips. Yeah, I like some of these other proven guys more, but if you really need to squeeze out an extra 20K, I can see why people would go down to Phillips. Flanders, we spoke about. Miller would probably be in my side if it wasn't for the buy. He's pretty interesting. Petrarca is a no for me with the rest of the mids back, and they've got Salem in there as well. He's not going to... They're going to move him forward. Um... Sicily's always been a no. Finn McRae doesn't have the job security. Uh, Pink, we've got other better defender options. Dawson, just don't see the appeal. I think Crouch in hurts him more than helps him. I still think he'll be top eight. Like I'll find him at some point in the year. Uh, Toby Green, I don't even know why he's that high. If you're going to jump on a GWS player for a couple of rounds up in that upper end, why not jump on Hogan into those soft matchups? 
Darcy, we spoke about English, I think is a fine option. If you really don't like Gorn, Cherry, Marshall, like I think English, English or Marshall would be fine. If you want to go a premium ruck and you've got the value elsewhere, I think I'd rather go like a Bont and a Decosso than English, but hey, you do you. McRae actually played well in the twos on the weekend, could be coming back sooner rather than later for that team and be someone that we target at some point during the upgrade season. Always a little bit risky coming off soft tissue injury, so I'd like to see him actually be out there for a little while before we jump on, see that role as well. Steel is interesting. I still don't think that they're going to increase the number of stoppages that the Saints have. They're going to play that more free-flowing um, possession-style game, not as stoppage-based. So, uh, yeah, I don't think that's good for Steele. He, he can improve on this, but he won't get back to his best, and you've got the injury risk. Harms never been a fan of. Sweet, not their ruck. And then Rosie, I actually prefer Butter still, but Rosie could be the better option of the two. That wouldn't surprise me. And then we're at 10% and under now, and come on, we're not going Bolton. So there you go. That's it. I kind of covered off all the big ones there. Um, the ones in the midfield that people might be talking about, actually the other like mid-price options, a little bit less field, you've got um, D'Ambrosio that could be there instead of Williams. I like Williams enough. I think he's going to improve on what he did on the weekend and consistently do so. Doherty out only helps him as well, I believe. So, yep, I'm him over Ambrosio. Could you run both if you really wanted to? I can't see myself doing that. Uh, Ambrosio could be a correction for either Williams or Yo for me if they don't work off. You have uh, Bonnet in the midfield, who I also think will well and truly outperform his 284k price tag. If he was either in defense or the forward line, I'd be much more interested. But in super coach, um, Probably not as likely to do so, especially given we haven't seen him with Sinclair, and Sinclair should be returning soon. Uh, Berry is a meme that's like uh, George trap pick. Don't worry about Sam Berry. And then Jared Lyons, who had a really big score on the weekend. Um, interesting to see what they do with him going forward. Uh, you know, DevRob wasn't available, which obviously uh, helps Lyons a little bit. He He can score. We know he can score well. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what they do with him. I'm happy to fade and uh, get him later if I really need to. I don't know. It's a bit of a tricky one because uh, they've got round two by, right? Yeah. So we get to see him one more week against Frio, see what changes lines make, and then make a choice before Collingwood North, which nice matchup for mids. I'm, I think I'm happy to wait on lines and, and correct him rather than start and he'd be wrong. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I think we've talked through the forward guys, really. Um, so, yeah, we I think we've blasted through that. Sub 30 minutes, which is pretty good. These can easily go for a, an hour or more than me, but I feel like I've, I've spoken about most of these guys to death and there's nothing popping out that's too exciting or too new. Um, it's just around fiddling with the structure and the tweaks based on what you like. I could imagine people going heavier in the forward line if they were into Flanders and into Jackson and wanted at least two of those, getting a Fife up to one of those. Um, I could definitely see being possible and running like a, you know, a, a Flanders Heaney Fisher or a Jackson Heaney Fisher kind of forward line makes a lot of sense to me. Um, uh, if you don't like Yo, uh, which a lot of people don't, and that's fine, I get why. Um, trading at Yo and putting in Houston, Stewart, uh, these types totally get that as well. I'm sure there's some that'll play with like a Whitfield or a Power now as well, or even a short, which you definitely could too if you wanted to take on the buy. Uh, I think I'm, I'm happy to go against it. Uh, where would you find the extra money from? Uh, like maybe if you don't want to run Fife in your forward line, you're happy taking on another forward rookie like Campbell from the weekend for the, for the Tigers, uh, Field Lazaro instead. Use that extra money to get you up. Yep, I could see that going uh, happening as well. And then maybe the only other changes in the midfield here, like um, uh, you could run either one less of the 600K plus primos and get another value option to free up cash elsewhere. Uh, or you could even want to maybe put an extra one in. Um, uh, you could even take one of these rookies off field. I don't know though. I don't know if I really want to have like two of these 180 plus guys on, on my bench. You could. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that's where the difference is going to be now. I actually feel like a lot of the players that people are talking about, rookies are all converging now. Um, it's part of what happens with round zero. We all see the guys play in actual games. You get a really good read on them. Um, you see scores in their system, which will either help or hurt their prices. And you take that into consideration. It changes how you think about things. 
which makes sense. It makes sense. It does. So here's my team. Here's where I'm at. Um, I know a lot of my teams have been considered quite wild and wacky and too value based and people haven't liked them. I think this one's still pretty value based, but it feels like people have slowly led towards my way. Maybe I've come back the other way too, because I'm, I'm paying for an extra big premium midfielder in Bont, but let me know what you think. Let me know what your team looks like, what decisions you're weighing up. Check out the SC mod and I will see you in the next one. Peace.